So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit interesting with this Scaper Cube 60 tank. This is an awesome bit of kit and it comes with absolutely everything. That's the cool thing about it. So you've got the tank, I've got the filter, I've got an old stand down here that I've just had in storage for ages. It's almost the perfect size for it. There's a slight overhang, but I'm going to use it because why not? The stand doesn't come with the kit, but I've got it laying around and it's, it's perfect more storage as well. So as many of you all know, I've been using these Superfish tanks, the, uh, the Scaper range, for a long, long time now, like years, and they're just such good value for money. And what's perfect is they are now full sponsors of the channel. Isn't that brilliant? So recently I went across to the Netherlands where, um, where Superfish are from. I met with everyone. I was so impressed by everything, how the operation was, that I decided that I'd like to be associated more with them. And as you guys know, I only bring companies to you that I fully trust in, believe in, and the fact that they make things like this so affordable for everyone. Uh, Europe, they're not, not across and over, over the pond into America yet but uh, you know who knows someday soon that could be the case but you're getting an opti white tank a filter a light everything that you need there's fertilizers there's everything you need in one one whole package here which is absolutely brilliant and it's so so affordable as well let's open it up and have a little we got So yeah, we've got a cube, which is OptiWhite glass. We've got an awesome uh, Scaper LED here, LED 60. This is so good, I'll show you in a minute. Really, really good hang on the back filter. It's got cartridges that you can take apart and clean if you want to as well, which is really good. That's one thing I didn't realize initially, but you can, I do it all the time now, works brilliant. And we've also got the shit, oh, hang on, I've got it stuck. <laughs> We've also got the sheet here that can go on the back and now you can have it black or you can have it white. For this one, I'm gonna do it black because I think it will work with the setup I'm gonna be doing. And the setup even comes with a fertilizer as well to get you started, brilliant. Oh, it even comes with a spongy leveling mat. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, if you guys are interested in buying this, take a look at the link below and it gives you a list of all your local stockists. Just type in where you are in that and it should come up with where you can get them. Okay, <laughs> doesn't really get much easier than that in terms of setup, does it, right? Look at that light as well, so bright. This is what I like. Normally full affordability means the companies skip on the quality, but the quality of everything is brilliant. I mean, it just, it looks classy, it looks solid. We've got that Opti white glass as well, looking perfect. The LED's bright and the filter's fully sturdy as well. Everything is absolutely brilliant. Right, now I've set it up, I actually need to move it to where we're gonna be scaping it. <laughs> So that is our tank all set up and ready to go. Now, before we do anything, I need to go to the shop and find some, I don't know, some like brick type things. I'm not even sure exactly what I'm looking for yet because I want to make a cool terrace, like a staged level system going up with loads of plants in it. Something a little bit different. It's kind of like a plant grow out tank that looks really sort of smart and presentable as well. So let's go and have a look and see what they've got. If they haven't got anything, I'm just going to go for a natural look with like rocks and wood, but uh, that's kind of different to the, the feel of this one really. Should we go and have a look in the garden center? Mummy's over there. <laughs> look at these benches, look. So nice. <laughs> well, I missed a trick here. Remember I did the owls video, the shrimp owls? These are huge, look. These could be the fish owls in like a four foot. <laughs> okay, so these have got potential. They're like rubber brick things, like recycled stuff. Um, they don't smell of anything, so I don't think there's any like hydrocarbons. So yeah, that, it could work. I'll keep looking though for a minute. Welcome to Pot World. <laughs> okay, we've got some, we found some slabs. That could maybe work as well, but these, oh, they weigh a ton. Very heavy. There's loads to choose from though. I'm not sure it'll work though, they're just massive. 
God, that's like pure marble, a bit too thick as well. Right, these could work a treat. So they've got the lines on them. They're made of like, I don't know, like cement, I guess. Um, so you can just, hopefully I can chisel them and break them on the line. And like Kate said, they're only cheap. So just, just get one, have a go. I need to come back and get more. I'm not far from the studio. So yeah, I think it's going to get one. Right, we're at home base. I was going to buy this bolstering tool and just hammer it down the little grooves on the uh, cement pieces but that's 14 pound which is like uh, 20 dollars something like that and this one is 30 pound for the full disc card and it comes with five or so of these cutting discs yeah five cutting discs as well for like yeah double the price but i've got a tool then worth the investment i think and it's going to work perfect Right, I've done the first sort of cuts in the bricks and um, they've all been sliced into individual bricks but it looks a bit square so I'm gonna sort of cut them so they don't sit perfect do you know what I mean so if we take a look at these look this one is slightly shorter so I had to cut a little bit off the edge to make sure that both pieces could fit in but the the if I do the join there like where they both meet if I do that all the way up it look a bit silly I think so I'm gonna cut this one in half so I've got two squares and one rectangle, re rectangle, put the rectangle in the middle, squares either side. The next one up, do the opposite, and it, it should look a lot better and a little bit less, I don't know. <laughs> it, should, it should just look better, all right? Okay, there we go, that's what I'm talking about, but obviously, it's not going to be leaning forwards like it is there because I'm going to have a, a base layer for it to sit on. And now I just need to do that, but like three steps high. I think that should be pretty good. Right, that's all the cuts made. Um, and now what we need to do is actually soak these things in water for like eight days. Apparently when you do that, it like stops all the, 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 I don't know the scientific words, but it takes all the chemicals out that cause the pH to rise. So that's what I didn't do when I did these guys here, which is the, uh, the shrimp owls. They, I encased them in epoxy resin, which done the trick anyway, but uh, apparently if I just left them in water for a little bit, it sort of neutralizes itself over time of being soaked in water. So that's what I need to do now, is just fill this up and then just let it soak. So it has now been, oh, I, well, I think about eight days, possibly more actually, but I've been doing water changes every day. I don't know if I needed to do that, but I just thought I might as well, it's only a little bit of water. So we should be good now. It should not be leaking stuff causing the pH to rise and we should be all good to go. So I really want to go for like a clean look in the foreground and I just want like a, a nice looking decorative sand. But before we put that down, I need nutrients in that sort of section. And for that, we have got the Nutribase. You guys know that I've been using this for quite a while now on a lot of my tanks. I've used it on this one, which is looking awesome. I've used it on the red one, which is also looking awesome. It went into this one here, which is just growing like a weed. It went in the 60 Better Fish Aquarium. I mean, just look at the plants, crazy. And it went in the Rainbow Fish Peninsula Aquarium and <laughs> need I say any more? Hello guys, look at the colors. Look at the colors on these guys. Oh, especially that turquoise there, so pretty. Yeah, anyway, a little bit of the nutri base in the foreground section here. Now, I don't need a huge amount. You're probably thinking, why just in the foreground section? Well, that's where there might be some plants underneath. All will become apparent in a minute. Then I'm just going to pull this away from the front a little bit just to give a sort of more neater finish. We're going for more contemporary design on this one, so I want everything to look a little bit more neat. And then I'm going to place this sort of decorative sand over the top. I'm just gonna place it in the foreground first, just so that it doesn't push all of that stuff back further. Now, I don't want this layer to be too deep. It's just, it's just for decoration, but we need it enough that it's gonna cap all of the, um, of the Nutri base. Now, on top of this layer, we can place our first row of bricks. There we go, it's a bit more of a sturdy base for them now which means I don't have to have them tilting forwards. You can have them tilting how I wanted them. Oh, it's tight there. Mm. 
Now I'm going to want to fill up that back section behind it with aqua soil, but I need to close some of the gaps first because there's a slight gap there, you see, a slight, a slight gap there. So we need to close that up. And for that, I can just use a little bit of filter floss or um, some, some old sponge, filter sponge. I've got some black stuff, so that'll go quite well there. Yeah, I should hopefully be able to just slip these in. Um, maybe a bit further back. If I do this, maybe, no. Yeah, there we go. That's working all right, isn't it? Gets the job done. That gap this side is very small, but if I can just push something in the corner. And then we need aqua soil as well. So then we've got our aqua soil as well. This is the Flora Base Pro from uh, Colombo. I mean, I was using the Colombo Nutri Base, so I thought I might as well get the aqua soil as well. It's all designed to work in the system, and it looks pretty good. The grain sizes look a bit sort of like varied, which I actually like way better. It looks a bit more natural rather than all exactly the same size sort of balls. But before I put that in here, because it's going to use a lot of that, I'm just going to make a little base layer of gravel. It'll also work well as beneficial bacteria area as well. A little bit more nutri base as well in that bottom section, and then we can put the aqua soil on top. So yeah, a little bit of recycled sand and gravel first, just to bump up that area a bit in height. Now this is stuff I've just saved from a previous uh, setups. Don't really like to waste anything, you see. <laughs> and then a bit more Nutri base on top of that. And then we can go with the Flora base, which is the aqua soil. Oh, I'm gonna need a lot. Spread that around a bit. Careful not to overflow the, uh, the, the retaining wall. And then on top of that, we can put our next layer, next retaining wall. That's what, that's what I seem to be calling it now. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, really come to, uh, to shape with now with those two sort of layers in there. So the final layer will be quite a sort of real shallow or narrow one really. It'll be up about halfway and then I can put some sort of taller stems in that background area but then they're not too close to the outlet and yeah you've got enough swim room and everything like that then as well. Just something a bit different you know, I think it should look, look quite smart. I am a little bit concerned about this all collapsing though when I fill up with water so I'm going to do that now just make sure it's not all shifting about and it's actually sort of balanced. Right, so it's gonna be murky, it's gonna be a mess, that's no surprise, because I was filling from the back because I didn't really wanna disturb what was underneath the sand, the dextrous sand in the foreground. So I'm filling from the back, and obviously that's just gonna pull it all through and it's filtered out, and that's just some of the dust that was on the soil, but it's fine. What I'll do is keep going with the layers, fill the whole thing up completely, turn the filter on and let it clear, and then I can just plant like as and when, take my time with it, and decide exactly where everything wants to go. It should be pretty good. Okay, well that, uh, it could have gone a little bit better. I disturbed the front, I don't know if you saw it in there and it just disturbed everything that was under there. I'll sort that out at a later date, but uh, I'm just gonna get that filter running now and get it nice and clear. And it look, it's looking pretty good so far, looking very interesting the way it staggers back. I'm thinking I'm gonna do real short plants in the foreground here, like epiphyte ones, like some boosts and nubius, and then short stuff there, medium sized stuff for the second one, and then tall plants at the back, that should look good. But yeah, let's get the filter primed. First thing you need to do is just take off the lid on. This is very hard to do one-handed. There we go, take off the lid, fill it up with water, and then when you turn it on, there'll be enough in there to sort of pull it through and it run fine. So it is now the next day, and as you can see, everything is crystal clear. We've got some bubbles on the glass, but that's all right. I'll get rid of that in a minute. But if we look from the side here, you can see the middle section has got this massive dip out of it. Now what that is, is where the flow is coming in off the hang of the back filter. It's just hitting that area there. So what we can do is just make a little ramp, like a little scoop that comes underneath, and that'll keep it flowing across the top of the water, down the front and back up again. So what we wanna do is just take a bottle, cut it to the appropriate like sort of thickness. Either that side's thick enough or that is, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> So we cut it all the way around like that, and we want to cut this into like three, three quarters. So there we go, just cut a slit in it. And I'm going to cut it about there as well. 
So we've got that scoop and then we can fold this bit here back on itself. That's the bit that will sit underneath where it comes in. This will become clear in a minute, but that's way too high of a scoop. So we can actually cut that down a little bit more. It'll be about there. And then the scoop just slots in underneath the little sort of waterfall area, like that. There we go. There you go, you see that there? Perfect, and it could just, I don't know if you can see there because of the bubbles, but yeah. Well, you can see the top there, can't you? It's coming down, scooping straight back up here, which means that all the flow comes from the front and back up, and that shouldn't be disturbed at all anymore. So the tank has actually been standing like this for well over a week now. I just wanted to be absolutely sure that all the parameters were completely stable before going any further. I don't want any like plants just randomly melting and things like that, it's nothing more annoying. It's all stable, it's all good, we can carry on with the build. Now to add a little bit more interest to the scape, what I want to do is put a couple of sort of wooden structures and I'm thinking one in this bit here leaning across, one right at the top there leaning the other way or one step down actually because it'll, it'll come quite high and that'll just give us a bit more of a sort of meandering look, a bit more interest. Now I got these pieces here, um, they're brand new though, they feel quite heavy and dense but I don't think that they're going to sink so what I'm going to do is just attach some rocks to the very base of them and then you won't even see those rocks and sit in the sort of soil. Yeah, they're quite interesting pieces, hang on. Like this one's quite sort of angular like that but I'll probably angle it upwards a little bit and then this one's just really cool anyway, yeah, like it. actually works so well and they are very buoyant as well. I mean, they are covered, covered in air bubbles that you can see, but they're trying to flow even with those rocks on them. A couple of days, they'll be absolutely fine. Um, now you might like sort of putting mosses and things on wood. If you do, absolutely great. Um, it's not something I really do because I find that in no time you, you can't see any wood and all you've got is just moss covering everything and you're trimming and it's going everywhere. So I don't really put mosses on my wood, but I do use Anubius and, you know, Java ferns and Bulbitis and, and Bucephalandra and all those kind of things. So yeah, the good thing about what we've done here is I can just take those out now and attach what I want. Now I know that that works. I can put it back in those positions. I like the depth that it's given us. I like the interest. I like the contrast to the uh, concrete bricks as well. I think it looks quite cool. A bit like man-made plus nature. It just, it's kind of working so far. So up here in my plant storage tank, I've got an absolute ton of Anubius and Bulbitis from Aquafleur. Um, they look so good. Hang on, let me get them out for you. Right, so we've got some Boost Green Velvet. We've got some Anubius. I think it's just a, a smaller version. Yeah, it is just a smaller one. And then I've got a big Java Fern Windelov here, but to be honest, that's too big. And some of the leaves are a bit dodgy. I've been growing this for like, half a year. It was a tiny little piece when I first got it. It's been in my little greenhouse section there. Um, but I'm going to trim off a lot of the sort of older leaves so we're just left with the fresh green ones because I don't want that big anyway. Look, look it's the whole size of the wood we want to put in. It's a bit too big. Oh, a massive shout out to Aquafleur as well because look at this. So many of you would have seen the build video for this now. This is my molly and sword tail planted tank. All these plants in here are from Aquafleur and this tank's actually only been planted at this stage for like two weeks and just look at how good and vibrant, amazing. Look at that macrandra back there. Such a good looking plant, right? But yeah, the fish are all settling really well in this tank, but I'm just trying to show you guys, show you guys how well the plants are settling. The Monte Carlo already starting to creep. There'll be no time at all we'll have like a foreground full of Monte Carlo and the Glossostigma over here as well, because that's creeping too. Anyway, amazing plants. Right, this is good, this is good. I'll tell you why, because that clearly doesn't work. It doesn't fit, it's all too big. Um, but it's good to show you guys that sometimes things you do don't work out perfect. Now, I've got a big project coming up that both these pieces will actually work well in. So it's nice to be able to show you how to create them, which is quite simple really, just stick some plants to some wood. But I'm gonna take them out. I'm gonna go with the original plan, which was not to have wood and just to have, you know, beds, if you like, of plants, taller ones at the back and then medium and then shorter in the foreground. I'll go back to that. And if we want to put anything else in afterwards, we can. But that for me is too overcrowded. It's actually 
it's ruining the look. If we had like normal rocks in there and we could do some sort of, I don't know, forest look, then it would work, but it's not working with this setup. So yeah, back to the original plan. And I've made the tank a little bit messy, but first thing I wanna do is start in the foreground and work my way upwards. And I'm gonna get some Monte Carlo and just stick it to some little round pebbles. They can sit nicely there. You can actually stick Monte Carlo because it doesn't need roots in substrate, it'll actually just grow anyway. So if you put it on the rocks, it will just spread itself out over time and you can dot them where you want then as well. Sweet, I'm loving that. It looks really, really good. And let's just keep the flow going now. Just don't overthink it. Just start planting plants in areas. I think this will look better if we keep it in pockets of color and uh, it will suit the fish that we're gonna put in here as well. No, I know how much you don't like these bright lights. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I didn't know we were filming. I was looking at the better. What's going on? Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah, we are. Uh, you might notice that Matt's in a uniform from a previous video. That's because we just did another bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's been doing multiple clips today. Okay, so this here has been here, what, a couple of weeks? A week yeah, so? Yeah, three or four weeks, yeah. And it, every time I've been here getting stuff, we've talked about how great it is, but Matt has kept so are they called dragon betters? Yeah, so they're blue dragon betters. Oh, that's just that name is wicked. I want them for the name alone. Yeah, absolutely, they're so cool. Blue dragon. So, and I'm like, it's, it's one of the other, I isn't think it's it? And the, the left one has more red in the pectoral. Oh no, they both have red in the pectoral fin. So yeah, they're both very similar. Yeah, aren't they? Yeah. Um, either or, but yeah, this is, the ones, this is the ones that I want. I've got a really cool setup for them. Um, this is such a cool thing. So cool. If you guys want betters, come down to Maidenhead Taunton. And at some point and, uh, soon. We've at some point we've soon. Sold so many. So yeah, yeah. Look actually, what have we got? Like four. Four. <laughs> Five, yeah, we've got a six. copper, a little koi, a little koi, two of the bloody dragon. That's it. Yeah. But four you've got five. more coming this week, haven't you? Yeah, so you have basically just got on repeat week order. And week after. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, so we don't, these came in, you haven't had them in with any other fish at all of you? Uh, these guys were, so okay. these guys were on system. Oh, um, okay. We had a new delivery coming in on system, so we just moved them off system just while we were um, get, getting the new fish in. So they were, the blue dragons were across the top row, so I think they were living with some of the Vietnamese cardinal minnows, oh, possibly the endlers, the Santa Maria endlers, there was one in with them. So, oh, okay. Yeah, they've been absolutely fine, they've not been aggressive, not been... Yeah, pretty fine. So seeing as they can go with other ones, because we know they're okay, some betters aren't, aren't they? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just individual betters, to be honest. You've got to be, yeah, mindful of them. They've got very individual personalities. How about, because it's a blue dragon, how yeah. about with the neon green Respora? That'd be nice. Yeah, that would work really well. I think that would work quite Blues well. and greens, yeah, I can see that working really nicely. Some would say blue and green should never be seen. The other thing is green neons. They're, yeah, yeah. That would be a matching colour then. 
I what do you mean matching colour? Well, like the blue of that with the red fins yeah. would then match in with the bluey green of them and the red. So the only thing I ever find with green rasbora mm. is in a really green planted tank. You don't really see them. They camouflage in really well, whereas okay. the green neon stand out a little bit more. But Sold. Okay. <laughs> I am the expert after all. Exactly. That's why I don't even argue. I'm like, I want the green ones. And you're like, no, you will have yeah. the neon green tetra. <laughs> I didn't even know I want them, but now I do. Now you do. <laughs> I do. And a little clean, clean up crew as well, as usual, please. Mano, Otto, yes. Standard. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Cheers, bag them up. So it has now actually been two weeks since I first planted the tank. The plants are just looking so healthy and fantastic. I've actually got the fish as well. I got them like a week ago. They've been in the temporary tank. They're doing really well. It's time to put them into this one. Yeah, just look at how quality it's all looking. The light here, although it's kind of a budget light, well, it's not super cheap. It's not nowhere near as expensive as the high-end lighting, but look at what it does to the plants. So all the plants are pretty much doubled in height. Like all these stems here were just tiny little nuggets. And look at how nice that boost is coming along in the middle there. Look, all that is new growth on that top section and I sometimes struggle getting boost to grow, but it's growing lovely in this tank. The background stem's now really reaching for that surface. There's not a lot of a, a gap between it now. And the rotala in the middle, I really like that rotala, it's looking good. And then that HR at the side creeping and uh, going even more sort of punchy. The Monte Carlo, it's not trying to grow up, right? It's trying to grow horizontally, which is what you would expect. So eventually it'll just carpet this foreground area, which will look so cool, won't it? Anyway, the fish are ready to go in. Yeah, I've got the fish down here. Oh look, there's the Arbetta right there the green neons are actually kind of shy um, i found this before with some green neons i can see them in there they like to hide in amongst the plants i don't know if i don't know if i'm making any of them out but they're in there to catch them i'm gonna have to actually take all of these plants out not a problem because none of them are planted they're all just like anubius and that um yeah catch them Right, that's everything clear out of that tank. I've got them on a the table here, look, in a couple of pots. Here's our amazing blue dragon betta. And here's all our neons. There's one um, Amano in there as well. I might as well put that in. A little bit of gunk in the water, so it might look, not look great straight away, but that's fine. I'll take that out as well. The duckweed and an old plant. Okay, going in first then is the green neon tetra. I think we've got about 30 there. Oh, and some gunk as well. A lot of them going into the foreground. Remember, the temperatures are matching and everything because I heat the room, guys, so. That's why I didn't temperature acclimate them. Okay, very excitable, a new environment. They don't really know where to go, but it's not gonna be long before they, uh, they can hide in amongst all these plants. I mean, that is pretty much what greons, green neons like to do. Hopefully they come out a little bit more than I was seeing them in the other tank though. I mean, there's plenty more sort of space in this one. So hopefully we will see them a bit more. And then in the star of the show, our blue dragon betta. Oh yes, look at that, so vibrant, wow. Look at how well he stands out in there. I knew that would be the case. Obviously, just colours. You can't get blue plants. Well, not that I know of anyway. I think, uh, I think there were some April Fool's jokes going around. But um, yeah, I've not seen any underwater blue plants. So a blue fish just stands out so well. And the green neons will as well, once they colour up a bit more. They're starting to get a bit of colour after being spooked from the move. But um, they, look quite, they look quite good, actually, the way they, they swim in there sort of just exploring, not just hiding and completely spooked out, so that's good. But that dragon better is just immense look, isn't it? Really, really standing out. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but I can't believe it. Hopefully the camera's picking it up as beautifully as my eyes are, like, it pulls you right in. This whole tank is very interesting. I've had some people in the studio recently, some visitors, and the first thing they did was come straight up to this one and they're having a look at it, because uh, I guess it's a bit different, isn't it, seeing these terraced sort of... Gar it looks like a garden. It looks like an underwater garden. <laughs> Quite a nice shot from the side here, look, really showing this sort of terracedness to it. It's shifted around a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. The plants still look great, don't they? And to be honest, the main thing I was looking for was the, the rows of plants. So the actual brickwork was more there for sort of retaining it, but looking a little bit decent whilst it all grows in. And you can't see a huge amount of it, but you know, the purpose of it was just to hold back as a retaining wall. You can do it with rocks, I'm sure you can. Uh, it's just the thing is, if you get rocks, they're not all gonna be perfectly flat. Maybe you can get some slates or something like that. I just went with what we, we could find at that garden center. But yeah, overall, I really like the look. It's, uh, it's a really good way as well of growing out stem plants, trimming them back, using them again, um, or re replanting them, whatever you wanna do. Look at the neons now. Neons all over the tank. They seem to be really enjoying the setup. Hopefully it stays that way. They do have a tendency to go back and hide after a while. I don't think they're sort of feeling threatened by the better. He doesn't seem bothered by them at all. 
They've been in that uh, lower tank for over a week and they've not had a single loss in there. Now obviously this tank's been running for several weeks. I've been ghost feeding it as well, so it's, it's definitely fully cycled and all good, especially with those amount of plants in there as well. So we're all, all good. All, all good? Oh right, okay. That's like extra good, is it? <laughs>